<laughs> She's a cheeky monkey. It's just gone 25 to 8. And as the Brexit deadline gets closer, we're hearing this morning about the worry and the anxiety facing people from other parts of Europe who now live in North Yorkshire. They're being encouraged to apply for settled status so they can stay here after the UK leaves the European Union. Well, with me now is Primo Winkler, who runs a consultants in Scarborough, helping people navigate all the red tape. Uh, good morning, Primo. Hello there. So how much red tape is there? There's quite a lot, actually. Um, for some people, uh, the settlement scheme is not really to be uh, easily done, uh, not just for um, procedural reasons. Uh, there's some certain technology that you have to use. You have to have a phone that is um, good for the procedure to go through. There are some confusing questions. And uh, it doesn't print out anything at the end. Some people just like to have their document in and not in this case. How worried are the people that are coming to see you, Primo? Uh, first of all, they don't understand what the settlement scheme is. They are worried a lot. Uh, they don't know whether they have to do it or not, when they have to do it. Same as Brexit, pretty much nobody understands what it is about. End of the day, uh, we have to inform people what it is really all about. Look, we'll hear from Ulrika. She's lived in the UK for 20 years and her partner is British and they've actually got children. I now have to apply to stay in my own home. I haven't done so yet because I'm terrified of getting the letter that so many of my uh, fellow EU citizens have received saying you've got pre-settled status only. So there's no, no way of knowing how the system will churn out your particular case. First of all, I don't have an Android phone, so that's something I have to borrow in order to even apply. Then I'm, I have no way of knowing whether my input will be sufficient for the system to grant me settled status. And I have enough uncertainty and worry at the moment. I don't want to add a black and white letter that says you can stay till 2024. Good luck. That is Ulrika. Now, look, she would rather not apply because she doesn't want to know the the 2024 pre-settled status if that would be the case with her what should she do Primo? i don't believe that would be a good solution for this lady here um some people are getting the settlement uh, status for the whole life indefinite it's it doesn't have any limits um if you'd like i can show you some because we printed it out for people in the case of this lady i believe that for the sake of her stay here and for the sake of the children i would do it I know that is causing some trouble, but there is also help. You know, we do that too, yes. She has children. Yes. Um, I believe her partner is British. So would that... She's not born here. Right, OK. So this, she, is, yeah. Yeah, this is something that she has to look at she has pretty to do seriously, it. yes. Right. Um, children are quite a challenge. Try to make a picture and this can with a baby staying still. <laughs> right, OK. Well, for EU nationals living and working here right now, what must they do before the 31st of October? Is that a deadline that they should do? Technically, they don't have to do anything. Right. Um, the deadline is really June 2021. Not many people realise that and they don't feel safe. Although the borders are getting full, Job Centre ha is having a lot of business uh, with registr uh, registering national insurance number visits. Appointments are just crazy long time for wait. And uh, we are staggered, like, with the amount of people that uh, come to our door, just banging all the time, and the uh, amount of people that really require what, uh, help with uh, all the procedures that are in UK. Pretty confusing. What is it's staggering? What What's the hardest part na to navigate? You mentioned the telephone uh, situation, and Ulrika really. said she no. had the telephone problem. But what is the hardest thing to navigate? Uh, funny enough, children. Because you have to have a sponsor to uh, get the settlement scheme done for the child. So who would be a sponsor? Um, the parent. Uh, in the case of this lady, I guess that might be some sort of issue uh, with her employment. If there is children, it's plural. So I guess she's not work not been working all the time that she's yeah. been here. So that raises a concern, obviously. So... Yeah, she has to do it. Um, otherwise, uh, when she's going to go for a holiday, she's going to be willing to come back and uh, on the border, yeah. she'll face some trouble. Right. So who gets settled status? Is there any guarantee? Mm, or 
there is some extra questions sometimes. Depends on the circumstances. Individual circumstances are different for everybody. Uh, we have had some challengeable uh, um, applications, but uh, in, up till now, all the applications that we help people do in um, were successful. There was no rejections. Well, Nothing is, to be afraid of, really. Yeah, you see, now they do say knowledge is power. Yes, and, it is. And, and, Information and, is a key. Yeah, and Ulrika at the moment is avoiding that that situation. More than glad to come and help. Oh, look, Primo, thank you so much no for coming to see us this morning. I really Pleasure, appreciate man. it. Pleasure. Uh, Primo Winkler there, he runs a consultancy in Scarborough helping people navigate that red tape. Um, you're listening to Georgie at Breakfast. If you've got any worries and we can put you in touch with some people, then please do give us a call and uh, I'm sure Primo will be able to help you out. 0800 111 48 49 when you call me. Uh, let's get some travel from David James and then some weather from Lisa. Good morning.